Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson three, linear equations in X. Okay, exercise one. Since these are exercises, it means that you are supposed to try them on your own. Pause the video, see if you've done it correctly, and then when you come back, we'll check. So here we go. So it says, is the equation true when x equals negative 3. In other words, is negative 3 a solution to this equation? That is the question. So I'm going to color this, color code this all nicely. So I'm going to use green for the stuff we know, and I'm going to replace x with a red. And since x equals negative 3, every place I see an x, I'm going to replace with negative 3 plus 5. And see if that equals. And I'm going to continue on the other side. 5 times x plus 8 plus 2 times x. So we want to see, oh, I meant to put my x, which is actually negative 3. All right, so there we go. There's an x, there's an x, there's an x. They're replacing these three x's with negative 3. So there it is. Now I'm going to simplify this. 6 positive times a negative is negative. I always mention the sign first so I don't forget. Positive times a negative is negative. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 5 equals 5 times positive times a negative is negative. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 8 plus, well before I write plus, a positive times a negative is negative so minus 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so negative 18 plus 5 is negative 13. Negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7 minus 6. And that would just say negative 13 equals negative 13. So is the equation a true statement when x equals negative 3? And the answer is yes. And it says to explain. Well, my form of explanation is showing my work. So if I substituted those values in, the left is equal to the right, therefore it is true. Number two, does x equal 12 satisfy the equation x minus 1 half x equals 3 quarters x plus 1? Explain. So I'm going to do the same here. 16 minus 1 half, substitute in my x, 1 half x, 1 half x, equal 3 quarters x plus 1. Okay, we want to know if that is true. So, PEMDAS says to multiply first, order of operations, multiply first and then add subtract. So when we do that, I get 16. Negative times a positive is negative. One half of 12 is 6. Equals 3 quarters of 12. Well, remember, this is like 12 over 1. Reduce. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1. Okay? 16 minus 6 is 10. 9 plus 1 is 10. Since this statement is true, then yes, x equals 12. Is a, makes this a true statement. Okay, number three. Chad solved this equation. And he's claiming that x equals 2. Makes the equation true. Is Chad correct? Explain. So now all we're doing is taking this equation and we're going to plug in 2 for every x we see, which there are 3. Okay, just recopy the problem, replacing x with 2. And I'm going to use a different color for my x so they stand out. Plus 4 plus 2 times x equals 3 times 10x, which is times 2. Make that a little neater. 
Okay. And I forgot the minus one. So I want to write minus one and then close the parentheses. Okay, there we go. This is the exact same as this, except the x's are two. PEMDAS says to multiply first. Positive times a positive is positive. 24 times 2, 48. Plus 4. Okay, don't do anything with that addition because there's still multiplication. Positive times a positive is positive. 2 times 2 is 4. We want to know if that is equal to. Now, PEMDAS says, I almost drew a distributive property. We could do that, but we still need to work on this. So, it's going to leave this alone. PEMDAS, the first letter in PEMDAS is P, parentheses. So, do the operation within the parentheses. We have multiplication and subtraction. Multiply first. 10 times 2, minus 1. Try to do every step and show it so you don't make mistakes. Because the sooner you, this, as soon as you start cutting corners, that's when mistakes occur. 48 plus 4. Now, this is all addition over here. So I can work left to right here. So 48 plus 4 is 52 plus 4 equals. Now I'm on the other side of an equal sign. PEMDAS applies to this side. It'd be 3 times what's in the parentheses, which is 20 minus 1. 52 plus 4 is 56. And 9 times 3 is 27. Carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5. 56 does not equal 57. Therefore, x does not equal 2. Okay, number 4. Lisa solved this equation. x plus 6 equals 8 plus 7x and claim that the solution is x equals negative a third. Okay, is she correct? Explain. So it's the same setup, so try it. Pause the video, come back. I'm just going to rewrite this and replace x's with one, negative one third. There's an x. Negative one third plus 6 equals 8 plus 7 times negative 1 third. So there's all my substitution. Um, so now I need to combine a negative and a positive, a fraction with a whole number. So, hmm, you need to be careful here. So 6 minus 1 third is 5 and 2 thirds. I'm not going to go into detail here. That's 6th and 7th grade material. 6 minus a third is 5 and 2 thirds equals. And again, we have PEMDAS. We have to multiply before we add. So it's going to be 8 minus, because a positive times a negative is negative, 7 thirds. 7 thirds is also 2 and 1 third. So this would be 5 and 2 thirds equals. And 8 minus 7 thirds, let me change that. Over here, I will show this one. 7 over 3 is the same as doing this. 2 times 3 is 6. Bring down the 1. 3 goes into 10 3 times. Or actually, there's a remainder of 1, so it's 2 and 1 third. So 2 is my integer. 3 goes into 7. Subtract remainder over what we divided by. 2 and 1 third. So 8 minus 2 and 1 third, 8 minus 2 is 6, minus another the third is 5 and 2 thirds. So is she correct? Yes, x equals negative 1 third. Okay, number 5 says, Angela transformed the following equation from 6x plus 4 minus x equals 2 times the quantity x plus 1 to 10 equals the quantity, or 2 times the quantity x plus 1. He then stated that the solution to the equation is x plus 4. Is he correct? Well, here's what we need to do. First of all, he converted this here to this. So the first thing I, I guess I would do is check to see if he did that correctly. Okay, so we need to fix this. 6x minus x is 5x. Now let me do it in the right color. So 6x, how about I just rewrite this? 6x plus 4 minus x. Combine like terms. 6x minus x is 
x plus 4. Okay, well, 5x plus 4 is not 10. So he's not correct in this transformation. You cannot convert a number with a variable to a, an integer without knowing what the value of x is. You cannot say for certainty that that is equal. So 5x plus 4, we can't just say equals 10. We don't know that. So the transformation is incorrect. So this is what we should have gotten on the left, not 10. If we replace x with the number 4, so now it says, it's then stated that the solution to the equation is x equals 4. So we can now check C if this equals 10. So if we, can, if we substitute 4 in for x, then we get 5 times 4 plus 4 which is 20 plus 4, which is 24. Okay. Well, 24, and then now if I look over at this one, and I say 10 equals 2x plus 1, where x is 4, then I get 10 equals 8 plus 1, and 10 equals 9, and then I'm saying, um, no, it doesn't. 10 does not equal 9. And 24 does not equal 10. So this is all mixed up. So plugging 4 in here. Oh, actually, that is right. I made a mistake. I forgot my parentheses. So let me fix this. All right, so... Hopefully you caught that as I was doing it. I forgot this parenthesis here. It's two times x plus one inside. So then I would simplify this and PEMDAS says to do the parentheses first. Four plus one is five and therefore 10 does equal 10. Okay, but 10 does not equal 24. So he is not correct. If he transformed this into this, then they both should have come out with the same value when you substitute in 4. Okay, number 6. Charlie was able to verify that x equals 3 was a solution to her teacher's linear equation, but the equation got erased from the board. What might the equation have been? Identify as many equations as you can with a solution of x equals 3. Okay, so the easiest way to do this, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but to come up with an equation that was erased, well, we would need an equation. We need an equal sign. And we need something on both sides that's always equal. So if I said 3 plus 7, and then I change this to x, then that would change to x plus plus 7. So I know 3 plus 7 is 10. So how about 3, because I need my x, times 2, which is 6. That's 3 plus 7. That's 10. 3 times 2 is 6. So here, let's start with the total 10. Here's 10. Now come up with something that equals 10 when multiplying 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. So then I could say 2x plus 4 equals x plus 7. So when I plug in 3, it is true. 6, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 3 plus 7 is 10. So there's one example right here. 2x plus 4 equals x plus 7. That is true when x is 3. There are infinitely many solutions to this. So play around with that a little bit. Check your answers. Best way to do it is work backwards. Start with a total on both sides and see how much stuff you can manipulate inside by dividing, multiplying, adding, and subtracting. Okay, number seven. Does, the equa does an equation always have a solution? 
Okay. Could you come up with an equation that does not have a solution? So in other words, if I had 3x plus 5 equals, can you put something on the other side that would never, ever be true? Okay, and the easiest way to do this is to take some number and multiply it by the same thing. So it's three times that number. We don't know what x is. And if I add 5 to a number and then I add 4 to that same number, obviously they aren't going to be the same. So there's one example here. So let me explain that a little further by saying let's let x equal 2. So when I plug this in, I get 3 times 2 plus 5 equals 3 times 2 plus 4. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4. 6 plus 5 is 11. 6 plus 4 is 10. Whoops, it is not true. Does an equation always have a solution? No. Could you come up with an equation that does not have a solution? Yes. There's an example. There's many others, but that's just one. Okay, that is the end of lesson three. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set. See.